So our theme in this season has been this call to return to the Lord in honest prayer. And the Psalms have been our guides for what that might look like. They've invited us to return with the stuff of our everyday lives, to return honestly with our anger and our darkness, and to be able to tell the truth because to have a relationship, you have to have a real person, right? They've invited us to return with our sin in confession. And today we're invited to wait. I don't know how you return with waiting exactly, but we are invited to wait. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. And as I was thinking this week about what it means to return to God with our waiting, I thought of a story that Jesus told in um, Luke chapter 18. You can find it, and it's this story Jesus told about prayer, and it starts with um, a widow who is nobody. By the by very definition of, of having no power in society, she isn't anybody. And there's a judge who is a somebody with a capital S, right? And he's not a good one. He's an unjust judge, and we don't know if that means he takes bribes or if he just doesn't feel any obligation to nobodies. But she's got a case. She needs justice. And she comes to him, and he does not deliver. And Jesus says she comes back. Every day she comes back, and she comes back, and she comes back, and finally this guy is done. And he's like, fine, if it will get her off my back, I'll do what she needs, and I'll be free. And Jesus said, how much more if, if an, a, a real loser like that can finally do what's right? How much more is God listening and waiting for your prayers? So I think waiting on the Lord has a lot to do with persistence. Just the way that this psalm puts it out, it sounds like this is a chronic state of affairs. I am waiting now, and I was waiting five minutes ago, and I will be waiting in five minutes, God. I'm going to let you know about it. So waiting invites us to a kind of persistence in prayer. And that's important because it matters. It shapes our relationship. Persistent waiting gives hope and trust a place to grow because it keeps us connected. Maybe you've had an experience with a friend where something has happened and they've disappointed you or you've disappointed them and things are kind of awkward and you have two choices. You can either work on it and connect and be honest and invest in, in conversation and staying connected even though it's difficult. Or, you know, what's a lot easier a lot of times is, well, just kind of let that fade a little bit and you don't see your, one another quite as frequently and, and you just end up drifting apart. But persistence keeps us connected. And connections can only deepen. They can only mean something when someone shows up, right? Relationships can only grow when, when people are showing up. And so persistence is inviting us to show up. We know God shows up. We don't always feel it. But God has promised always to show up. And so this invitation to wait for the Lord again and always is an invitation to show up. And when we do that over and over and over, it starts to shape us. You've all seen rocks that have been rolled and tumbled smooth in a stream, right? And it's that time and that wearing, slowly and slowly and slowly, they've changed shape. They didn't start out smooth and round. Or, um, I've never seen it yet, but the Grand Canyon started as a little stream towards the surface, right? And thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years wears its way into the ground. Or my favorite is at a beach in California, um, in Santa Cruz, it's called Natural Bridges. And um, where the, the coastline around there is really rugged and rocky. There might be a sandy beach, but there's always a nice rocky cliff 
there too. And this one's right up in the water. And over, over time, water has worn out a nice hole through this sort of arching thing. And so over time, the waves going in and going out and going in and going out have made this beautiful arch that you can watch the sunset through. It's just lovely. But it's time and it's wearing that did that. It's not someone with a hammer. It's not a rock fall. It was the wearing of the tide going in and out and in and out. And our persistence in prayer gives God the time to shape us, to smooth out some of our bumps maybe, or maybe make us into a completely different shape than we thought we were when we started. And when we keep with that connection, not only does that give God the chance to shape us, that also gives us the chance to really start to get some clarity about who God is, right? When you know someone for a little while, you know the surface layer. And the longer and the more deeply you connect, the better you know them. And with God, that means the better we understand God's trustworthiness. And the more clear we are about everything else. You notice that maybe in Psalm 46, not chosen for the election season, but highly appropriate, right? Do not put your trust in princes or mortals. There are a million and one people and things and political systems and commercials and cereals that all say, I'm your, your solution for heart disease. I'm your solution for everything, right? And the longer that we know God, and the more we persist in bringing our real needs, even when it feels like nothing is changing, we start to see through those other things, and we start to understand what loves us and what does not. There's a line in um, the Gospel of John after Jesus has said some hard things to the crowds that were gathered around, and this was the straw. You know, Jesus has been saying weird things, and Jesus has been asking things of them, and Jesus said these hard things, and a bunch of them just said, you know, that's it. I'm going home. I, I can't make heads or tails of this guy, and it's just hard. I'm going. And so Jesus, after all that, turns to the disciples who are still with him and says, well, are you going too? And and Peter says, well, where else would I go? Where else could we go, God? You have the words of eternal life. And it seems like half of it is, yes, we trust you, but two-thirds of it, yeah, I know that's more than one, two-thirds of it is nothing else it delivers. Right? They've seen through because they've gotten to know Jesus, all the other things that promise. And so when we persist in our prayer, we start to get some clarity about what is trustworthy and what isn't. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. I don't know if those are people on the night watch or if those are people who can't sleep or both. But they know what they're waiting for, right? They know it will come. They know there is a morning. And as we persist in prayer, we start to know who we're waiting on. We start to be able to recognize God. At work. If you talk to people who, um, and I, you know, I've had the privilege to know some, and I bet you, if you are sitting in this space, you've had the privilege to know some too. People who have lived this sort of deep, faithful prayer for years, they won't say, well, now that I know all about prayer, I can really get God to do exactly what I ask. I'm such a great prayer that it happens yesterday. No, of course not, right? But what they'll say is, I have learned to see God at work in the world in ways that I couldn't when I began. I'm able to recognize, I know what the morning looks like now, and it may not be what I thought it was. And sometimes it surprises me, and sometimes it's farther away even than I expected it would be. But I know now what the morning looks like. I know what God at work in my life and in the world looks like. When I persist in prayer, I get to know my God. So ultimately, our, our waiting on God, our persistence, it teaches us to trust, right? Don't put your trust in princes. Hope in the Lord. Because we learn who God is. We learn like the psalmist in Psalm 146, we learn that God is the one who gives food to the hungry and sets the prisoner free. That God is the one who sees the blind and opens their eyes, who lifts up those who are bowed down the one that notices the stranger and lifts up the orphan and the widow. That mercy is who God is. 
Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we pray that you would call us again and again to wait on you. Invite us to bring our need, our struggles, our sorrows, and put them at your feet again and again. We pray, God, that that you would equip us to do this so that we might know who you are, that we might know you as the one who notices the unnoticed, who loves the unlovable, and who has called us your child. Amen.